Hey, Kevin, what are you doing? Well, I was trying to set up a little demonstration here. A uh, gentleman by the name of Bill down in the Caribbean, he emailed and he said, if I've got you know kind of an ugly looking MIG weld, can I fix that with a TIG? Or do I just have to like go in and grind it all out and start all over again? And of course the answer is yes. You know, that's, that's one of the great functions of a TIG, is to get in there and be able to melt metal, move metal, you know, push metal around, you know, also have a little filler rod handy. So if you have a little low spot, you, know, you can go in and add a little in there as you're going. But yeah, I, I do it all the time. I'll make, a, I'll make an ugly little MIG weld, oops, go grab the TIG, especially like on an inside corner or something like that, you know, where it's really hard to get in with a grinder. Let me get my gear, we'll clean this one up just a little bit. Well, let's see what we get here. So using my uh, Everlast Pro MTS 251 SI, which is a three function machine. And I've just got the TIG set at about 120 amps, I think it is, 125, right in that range. And just kind of walk it back and forth across that weld. Get that weld hot, you know, get that bead hot from the MIG. There's a little low spot. I'll add a little filler right there. But just get that MIG weld hot, get it to flow in a little bit better. Heck, it'll almost look like somebody knows what they're doing. Fingers starting to get a little warm. <laughs> a little more filler right there. And you can do this, you know, with the straight arc like I'm doing, or I could also turn the pulse on, which would help uh, help with the appearance. It also allow me to run a little bit hotter, so I could get a little better penetration out of it, get that weld to flatten out, smooth out the way it's supposed to, without uh, you know without running the risk of just blowing through the other side. What do you have it set at right now? Well, right now I believe the amps are set at 120, but it's just a straight arc. You know, I'm not running the pulse at all. And we'll just kind of finish that out a little bit. Push the button. So here's the weld that I did not straighten out. And you can see, you know, starting at the top of this piece, well, the weld got over onto this side pretty well, but kind of almost missed here. Moving down, you can see where it dropped back down into the joint the way it's supposed to be, but too fast, not enough wire, not enough heat. And then you get down to here, and here's where I started with the TIG. And just sweep it back and forth, smooth it in. A little bit undercut right there, where I got a little too high as I swept up, not enough filler. but. Help to blend all that in, make it look a whole lot better. So Bill, that was a great question. You know, can you use one machine to fix the mistakes of another machine? Uh, and it's good practice too. You know, if you've got pieces that you're working on, you want to get in there and clean them up a little bit more, always great to play with the TIG, reach in there and do it, learn how. You know, eventually you'll just put that MIG away and just do it all with the TIG. So I'm going to go back to what I'm doing. You guys are going to pop out to the website, my website, and sign up for my newsletter. And I'll see you next time. Okay. Can I get a stronger magnet? <laughs>